That's why we're learning about history. Hi. Um, welcome to this month's Our Community Stories. Um, this series is a part of learning about the communities that make up our great city of Durham and learning about the stories and history behind each of those communities. The, Durham is a place of diverse cultures, experiences, and perspectives. In our rich history, some stories have been inaccurate, hidden, or forgotten. And this series is a dedicated space for sharing histories from Durham's marginalized and underrepresented communities. These stories help us build a fuller understanding of how the Bull City came to be what it is today. They help us understand more about the diverse cultures and communities that we still have with us. And they inspire us to imagine a future where everyone feels safe, supported, and valued. This month, we're learning about McDougal Terrace. Um, this is a still very active and, and large part of Durham, his, of Durham presently. And so I'm so excited to have had the opportunity to learn about the history and be able to share this time with you all. Um, this series is brought to you by the City of Durham, our Neighborhood Improvement Services Department, and this is a part of the Community Engagement Team and our work around equitable community engagement. You can learn more about um, our team and the work that we're doing and access to our past, our community stories, and so many other things on our website, durhamcommunityengagement.org, and also on our Facebook page, Durham Community Engagement. And now for the reason why we're all here, um, I will turn over to today's speakers, um, uh, starting with Ms. Constance Wright. Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming to hear our community story about MacDougal Terrace. Um, the story of MacDougal Terrace, I wanted to tell because when we started um, with the community stories, I actually live in Bragtown now. And we started with the story, well, we didn't start with the story, but we did the story on Bragtown. But as I was talking to Laura and other people, I was always telling them how we grew up in Magaluga Terrace back in the 50s and 60s. And how, you know, then it was a, a great community to live in, uh, neighbors, new neighbors, people looked out for each other, teachers looked out for you, the um, community business leaders, they looked out for you. And it was just a good place to be. Although a lot of times, you know, I was asking Alton a little bit earlier, you know, did you think you were poor? I was asking Bron um, Vaughn, did he think he was poor? They were always saying we were poor, but we didn't, I didn't feel it. They didn't feel it. So, and I'm sure a lot of other people that live there did not feel it. Um, MacDougal Terrace was a place to uh, live, but have a come up, to come up and come out, not to stay there forever. So uh, on our panel, I, um, my name at that time was Constance Gerald. My brother was Marvin Gerald. Uh, my mom and dad, Vanda and Della Gerald. And we stayed at first in the 24 um, building, 24E. And that's our picture that you see on the front um, of the, of the uh, announcement. And we moved from there to what they called the new project because that was the second phase of MacDougall that was built to 59G Wabash. But during my entire time, we moved out when I was 12 but I always came back because that's where my friends were, you know, and that's, that's just where I felt at home. So um, given that, um, the introduction will be for Alton Joyner and for Vaughn Brunson, and they will, we will all start, you know, just talking, uh, just conversating. People that are in the chat, if you have things that you want to say, you know, or have memories of MacDougall or your experience with MacDougall or anything, just chime in in the chat and uh, there will be Q&As, questions and answers at the end of the program. So now I will um, tell you about the history, a little bit about the history of MacDougall Terrace. MacDougall Terrace is named after Richard L. MacDougall, who was a um, businessman um, 
and landowner, and he also was a part of the um, not mutual savings and loan, but he started a savings and loan company here in Durham. But his uh, plight was always to have something better as far as living conditions for African Americans. And although he died in 1949 and the um, McDougal Terrace was built in 1954, uh, he had a lot to do with us getting McDougal Terrace and better living conditions. Uh, my brother always used to say, you know, in McDougal Terrace, you had three hots in a cot, which meant you had three hot meals, warm, um, warm living conditions, you know, and you had somewhere to sleep uh, instead of having to sleep out in the cold or whatever. And um, what he did, he fought for us to have better living conditions. Although he passed early, they passed the housing bill in 1949. And that um, allowed for McDougal Terrace, which was the um, black community and few gardens, which was the white um, public housing to be built here. So, uh, so that's the picture that you see on the screen of Mr. Mac, uh, Mr. McDougal. And the other picture that you see is the proximity of McDougal Terrace from North Carolina, uh, then it was North Carolina College. And you see how small the campus was at that time, but uh, that's the proximity, the, the buildings that you see in the background, that's McDougal Terrace. Uh, and I like to tell people, you know, when we were little coming up, you know, everything was so situated, you could walk wherever you needed to go. There was bus service, but you could also walk and um, go to different places downtown, you know, Haytai, all of these different places, Central, North Carolina uh, College, uh, Pearson Town, anywhere you wanted to go, West End, everything was like in a nice proximity where you could walk, get your exercise and everything. So um, that's a little bit of the history. Um, this part Alton could tell you about because this is the part that, um, this is the area that he stayed. Good morning, <laughs> uh, and happy holidays to uh, to everybody out there. Uh, I'm honored to be a member of this panel when Constance gave me a, a shout out. She didn't have to twist my arm uh, in order for me to accept the invitation. I consider it uh, a real pleasure. I'm a lifetime advocate for McDougal and um, uh, well, residents established more than 60 years now of relationships, friendships, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, but I set some goals for myself. Uh, at the end of this presentation, I'd like for a few things to happen. Uh, one is that we remain friends and neighbors and support each other for the remainder of our lives. And two, I want to dispel some of the myths about McDougal Terrace, okay? Uh, three, I'd like for the current residents of McDougal Terrace to benefit from this exchange. What you're looking at is uh, apartment 1A, which was actually the third unit that I would occupy in McDougal. Uh, we arrived in McDougal Terrace along with people from all over the city in 1954. Uh, we lived at 8E Wabash. People came from West End, North Durham, the bottom, Haytai, uh, and all over the place. And we all got together there and we became a community. And I'll extend that community uh, to the peripheral streets, such as Bacon Street, uh, Rosewood, Ridgeway, uh, Plum Street. All of those people were part of the McDougal experience. And so I consider them a part of the McDougal uh, community. Okay, and as we go forward, uh, the first myth was that uh, 
McDougal Terrace was all about housing. And while housing was a major component, as Constance shared with you, the vision of uh, R.L. McDougal, housing was not the only component. The aspects of life from the executive branch of government would have every executive department contribute to, in some way, to the project of moving people up in economic status. So you had every, every branch of the executive department, uh, including Department of Interior. That's why we have parks. We had parks in the McDougal Terry's community and across the street. If you look down below in that picture, uh, that was a recreation area and behind that was the spray pool. All of that was compliments of the Department of Interior. Uh, you had uh, a hospital or medical facility, someplace near any housing project was a medical facility. And of course, for us, that was Lincoln Hospital. You had great schools, Department of Education. The Transportation Department had a lot to do with the uh, traffic configuration in McDougal, even down to the point that our handicapped residents were all situated near the bus line where they had a short stint to catch the bus. And most of those handicapped people I know on Simon Street, there were three uh, blind uh, residents, the Washingtons, the Barretts, and uh, the Bobbitt, Bobbitts. And they were all on Simon Street near the uh, bus transportation. And so every department, because the idea was that if you were going to escalate economically, then you would have to have more than a shelter over your head. And I think the, the myth is, is that the project was, was for people who couldn't afford to do any better and who uh, would stay there the rest of their lives. Untrue. The Veterans Department, veterans had first preference for entry into uh, MacDougall. Uh, if the veteran was deceased, obviously his, his wife would have a, a preference. And so every, again, every department, you name it from commerce uh, to uh, housing and urban development was represented in what was called a project. A project has a goal and the goal was that we would move upward because we were going to have lower rent, which gave you an opportunity to save, invest, et cetera, et cetera. I think a better experiment, and that's what most people consider the projects, an experiment. And an experiment would have been to let, leave people as they were because we had a self-sustaining community in Durham that I think would have been more interesting than what we have here. Now, uh, McDougal was an advocate for better housing and Truman as well. But in latter years, I would, uh, I would talk to contemporaries around the country who lived in public housing. Uh, in Atlanta, for example, of where I am now, uh, the first housing project was in 1942. And in discussion with another colleague from Montgomery, Alabama, we were discussing the floor plan <laughs> of uh, McDougal Terrace. And they said this is the exact floor plan, plan they had in Atlanta and in Montgomery. Yeah, I found that interesting. At any rate, at the conclusion 
of this, I would like to, for people to understand that MacDougall was a very successful uh, project because from there uh, came so many successful people whose mindset was steered on by the mindset of management in 1954. And um, after we're gonna kind of move on uh, a little bit uh, in the pictures that you all are seeing now, are some of the uh, people that I grew up with. Uh, <laughs> you see my brother Marvin, Vaughn, and um, that's Sonny Harris right there. And that's Sonny, uh, Frank, my brother Marvin again, and Leroy Johnson. And that's myself again and my brother. But uh, all of these people, we still stay in touch with. <laughs> and that's the that's the beauty of what we were doing when we were growing up in McDougal Terrace. There, there were many, many more, but and uh, I was talking to one of my real good friends, Retha Rogers, and we were going through some of her pictures. And what was so uh, ironic is we had pictures of you know family members and everything, but we didn't have any pictures of the landmark. So, um, but you will see some of the pictures of the landmarks of MacDougall Terrace as we go on. But um, these are just some of the things that we did. Um, you know, you see our wagons, tricycles, and this is our Sunday best with Vaughn, Marvin, and, and Sonny. And then uh, I guess this was one a Sunday afternoon or whatever. But um, yeah, MacDougall, I have real, farm members of MacDougall, and I'm sure a lot of people do. I saw somebody put in the um, chat that, you know, um, that is, they took the um, office, the library away from MacDougall Terrace, but well, they took a lot of things away from MacDougall Terrace since we were going, because when we were living over there, we had three parks, we had the um, library, we also had T.A. Grady, and we'll go on you know to talk more about that too and you see pictures of the library uh here and that's alton standing in front of the what we used to call the office and the library so um yeah so that's that's some of the things that we did over there and it'll, it'll, and a lot more that you will hear about so the next slide um laura Vaughn, do you have anything uh, you want to talk about? Yeah, I'm glad to. My, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Vaughn Brunson. I first resided at 24D Ridgeway, and then we later moved to 27D. And uh, I can't, I don't remember the exact year that I, we moved into MacDougall Terrace, but we, uh, we moved there from Fairwood Street Project and, um, I entered the first grade, so uh, I went. To, I went to the first grade when I was five. So I would say in 1953 to 54, we, we moved to uh, McDougal Terrace. And what you what you're looking at now is a uh, uh, T.A. Grady, which was an inter integral part of my upbringing. There I learned uh, from Mr. Uh, Mr. And Mrs. Ruth Knox, who were also uh, they lived in the area. And they were uh, instr instrumental in, in developing a lot of, uh, of us. And uh, also you see the spray pool there. The spray pool was the cooling off center <laughs> in the summertime. <laughs> we also used it as a skating ring too. Uh, we would skate there on Christmas, during Christmas day. Uh, um, it was uh, my, my family uh, stress education as most all uh, families during that time. Uh, we also participated in, in uh, um, marches and protests. Our neighbor, uh, who, was, who was my godmother, Miss Ruth Jones, she worked at the Carolina Theater, which was, uh, which was segregated at the time. We sat at the top and the uh, uh, other people, they sat at the, the Caucasian sat at the bottom. But, 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 um, I, I had such a rich, such a rich, rich, rich uh, upbringing in the MacDougall Terrace. Uh, Henry Smith was a, he had a grocery store, a uh, black guy had a, other than Malone, Henry had a truck, he would come and sell vegetable fruit, fresh 
version of Shrews and Watermelons. He allowed us to work for him, knocking on doors. Also, uh, Henry Bates had a service station up on uh, on uh, Austin Avenue and Glen Street, and he he allowed us to come up there and do certain things. And uh, R. Kelly Bryant. Uh, uh, then we had a baseball uh, uh, coach, uh, Mr. Paul Carnegie, who took vast amount of interest in, in our community, and uh, and helped us uh, helped us in so many ways that um, you know I can't I can't I mean he was he was like a father to those who didn't have fathers. R. Kelly Bryant he took us on uh, he took us up to Virginia uh, to uh, count trips. And and the amount of support that we had in that community, and and I I want to think think about Alison's mother. Alison's mother was an activist, and she was instrumental in the voting. Miss uh, Miss Fisher, Marina Fisher, um, she was very instrumental in registration. I, I can see her now with that clipboard in her hand. This is over fifty years ago. That I, she had that clipboard in her hand, and uh, I I also remember vividly. Uh, 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 Miss Jackie Parker, her, she's not on here, uh, Jackie Williams, but uh, uh, her mother was also very instrumental in making sure that people voted and uh, they got people out to register. I'm, I'm going to stop right here, but I'm not finished because I want, I'd like to um, move on because we, we, we in McDougal Church, we, um, we excel, we excel in, uh, in uh, sports, we excel in education, matter of fact, uh, we had a, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got a lot going on. So, sorry about that. Uh, uh, we, we excelled in sports education. And, and Johnny, Johnny Williams, he was a, a city council member for us. Uh, he represented Mac. So the, 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 what, what Mac Dubacher has now is, uh, is not our experience. Uh, the community uh, was very, uh, very instrumental in supporting uh, all of our wants and our needs. I'm saying in the past. Um, Reverend Douglas Moore, who, who later became a city council member here in Washington, D.C., that's where I reside now. Uh, he, he had Asbury Temple Methodist Church. He, 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 laid, it, he, he laid out uh, a spiritual path for many of us. And uh, I, I, can talk, I can go on because the, 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 uh, Hillside High School, I'm looking at it now, our roots are deep, and uh, and constantly asking me about being poor. Now, that was a state of of, of of mind. That wasn't a state of to me. That's never been a state a state of uh, of comfort. Of reality. Uh, I, I, I was always I was always rich in spirit. So uh, uh, what 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 Mac Dugatieris gave me, I could always feed myself. So I'm gonna stop right there for now. Well, Vaughn, that, that was uh, <laughs> probably the best that could be stated. Uh, it was a state of mind. And I, and I shared with Constance in my answer to her question about being poor, uh, that I never thought I was poor uh, because we were actually trained at home to uh, delay gratification. Meanwhile, you had a lot of hard work to do. And so uh, we were rich as well and we never compared ourselves to anybody. Uh, so we knew that generations later, the hard work would pay off, or at least we, we bet our quarter on that. A uh, Couple of stories about, you mentioned uh, Smith's store uh, and Malone's. Uh, and Constance mentioned earlier about Miss Malone teaching her a few things. Well, Mr. Malone taught me a good lesson and that is not to steal I had my eyes set on an apple in Mr. Malone's store and I must have been around seven. And I must have broadcast my intentions in my eyes because I kept looking at the apples. Finally, I built up enough courage to go over, grab the apple, put it underneath my shirt. And I walked out of the store and Mr. Malone stopped me. He says, give me my apple or pay for it. 
I was speechless. I was frozen. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. He took the apple away and he says, don't come in my store anymore. So I go home and as soon as I get home, my mother sends me to the store to pick up a few things. I can't go in the store. So I end up going to Smith's, which was about a five minute walk up the hill. But when I didn't return home in time, I got a whipping for being late. And every time she sent me to the store, I'd have to go to Smith's. And sometimes Smith didn't have what Malone had. Smith had more produce and I couldn't get a canned good from Smith's. So I got a whipping every time I went to the store. Finally, I decided I'll apologize to Mr. Malone so he would allow me access back to his store. So he taught me not to steal, that the penalty could be severe. That's my Malone and Smith story. On the screen, on the screen now, you have a picture of uh, the No Book Store. Well, uh, uh, the No Book Store didn't start on Fairwood Street. No start, No Book Store started on uh, on Diller Street, and 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 Bruce Bridges, who later became Doctor Bruce Bridges, and and taught at um, uh, many institutions in the area. He started right beside uh, Jackie Parker who had a consignment store and a thrift store right next to him. And this was in the early eighties. This was in the early eighties that they had. I didn't know that you could get a, a business license until when I went to see their stores and they, and they, uh, oh, uh, and, and they, and they, they were in business. So we produced not only, um, uh, educators, we, we produce a lot of business people from that magnitude. My brother, Ron Brunson, he, he was in business for over 50 years with, uh, he had different uh, auto shops and he's still, now is still in business as we speak today. And, and, uh, and I can't be begin to tell you about the athletes who came out of, North, out of, out of, uh, uh, out of, uh, out of, uh, out of, uh, they, they're just too fast to, to, uh, so why don't you why don't you name a few of them? Uh, uh, we had like five quarterbacks who all co who quarterback with North Carolina Central University. We, we had uh, Bud Lyons, the Lyons family. We had Earl Burnett. We had Johnny Williams. Uh, oh, I can't think. It's so many. So many of those guys played. Uh, Really, really good uh, uh, sport guys. Yeah, Charles Rome's. Um, yeah, Charles Rome. They're the pictures. Um, they call him T Tot, but there's Rodney Rogers. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a lot. Um, he came out of so. McDougal Church and he sustained. He played for the. He played in the, the National Basketball Association for 14 years. He's played 14 years at. So we, we have June Hearns, Albert Daniels, so many other people that, that came out of the Rogers brothers, they played football. There were so many athletes, so many educators. I remember uh, Shirley Ward, she was a, she was a, a what's, what's the academic award you get when you're young in, in high school? The who's who, they were in who's who of America. So the, the I, I've been keeping up with Matt Dugaturis for a long time. And, uh, and wh what you have there now is not what was the, the seed planted in us. Uh, I'm looking at Ms. Phyllis Joyner, uh, very successful in her arena. Uh, and and I, I, I wanna say this, I wanna say this right quick. I wanna, I wanna thank each, it's 101 participants including us on here. I, I really want to thank you guys for uh, showing a great interest in this because you could be doing uh, so many other things now. And, uh, and and if you have any questions, could you put them in the chat? And if, if I can answer them, I, I certainly will. Absolutely. And Vaughn, you know, it's funny you mentioned uh, Jackie Williams, Parker, and Bruce uh, operate next door to each other. They were right across the street from each other in McDougal. Bruce was in two 
building, and I think Jackie was over in three on the other right. side of Ridgeway. That's right. Yeah. And I forgot, I forgot to mention this, Al. We Matt Dugan Turris produced the first African American police chief in Durham, North Carolina. Jackie, Jackie McNeil. McNeil. Absolutely. He was the first. He started off as a firefighter and an EMS, and then he became the police chief and had a very successful uh, uh, tenure there. Hey, Vaughn, you, you mentioned Earl Burnett. <laughs> Earl Burnett was probably the first guy I would say was, was an entrepreneur. I remember Earl Burnett most, and most of you who are, who are listening will probably agree, the ice cream truck. Earl Burnett drove the ice cream truck through McDougal, and you could hear the music playing blocks away, which gave you time to try to get some money out of your parents <laughs> so that you get some ice cream. And Earl operated uh, that truck for quite some time. In fact, a guy by the name of Sonny, I don't know what Sonny's last name was, but who owned the ice cream trucks, Sonny had a place that was a prior fire department, fire station up on Mangum Street. It was abandoned. I ended up living next door to that uh, fire station years later. Uh, and that's where they, where he housed his, his ice cream trucks. And Earl was the first person I know. And I don't know whether Earl ever worked for anybody other than himself in his life. He may have, I don't, I don't remember. But many entrepreneurs uh, that we looked up to uh, in the older days, uh, you talk about Tinks and McCoy with McCoy transfer. And then as time went down, people like Sammy Settles, uh, who ended up back in Durham with a restaurant and nightclub, and I think who made his mark in New York uh, doing the same. Uh, all kinds of uh, entrepreneurs, uh, people around the community. Uh, Tom Wilkins, uh, who was a tinkerer and an engineering uh, mindset, went on to build a multi-million dollar telecom company that's still existing today after 30 something years in business. Um, Arthur Johnson from Rosewood. Arthur is a... Um, Executive Vice President for Boeing Corporation uh, and has done very well. In fact, I may see Arthur later on this evening. Uh, who else? Uh, oh my God. So many people uh, who did wonderful things uh, from around McDougal and in, in McDougal. And I thought it worth mentioning that. I know um, one of the one Sidney James, y'all remember him? The um, yeah. Sidney James truck. <laughs> a, a lot of the um, people around there, Mr. Um, Mr. Smith, you know, they used to come over there and sell their um, goods from the trucks. Uh, they they were the first um, people to have um, what do you call it? Yeah, trucks that you could go and you can buy candy from, um, you know, or produce. I, I remember one time uh, somebody, I, I don't know who it was, but they came around selling chickens and, and just <laughs> rang the chicken's neck. <laughs> Had to pull the chickens flying all around, but people would actually buy the chickens from the truck. But those were the types of things that um, we did. I want to uh, go back to Ms. McKissick. She, for me, they started the first, um, you know, um, preschool in McDougal Terrace at T.A. Grady, and I was one of their first students uh, to go there. It was Ms. McKissick and Ms. Um, Ms. Um, Knox that were our teachers. And then, uh, you know, at that recreation center, we had like dances and different things that we could go and, and do at the recreation center. People hung out there. Uh, and so, yeah, we had a lot of people sold candy from their houses to make ends meet, you know, to, to have, we call it a side hustle, I guess that's what we call it now. But then it was a way to make a way out of no way. 
And who was like selling said, candy, Constance? One of the lady, <laughs> and I didn't know her name, but uh, she stayed on Simon Street. One of the blind lady, uh, she said she stayed right there on Simon Street. Miss Washington. You mean, uh, the Washington, mm -hmm. yeah. They sold. They she sold. No, that was um, Mr. that was that was Mr. Barrett. I he think that's what was. She I did. She, they Mr. stayed on Mr. that Mr. corner Barrett, house. Mm -hmm. Mr. Barrett used to open up the office. Had a little uh, place there behind the masonry shop where he mm -hmm. sold candy on Sundays. Yeah, I I know yeah. he sold candy. I went to because I, I bought some. <laughs> Yeah, so, but yeah, but I'm trying to I'm trying to figure who was selling candy out of their house. <laughs> that was where it was. It was in there. I'm apartment. not doubting your word, but I never knew. Yeah, it. yeah, that, I yep, I remember that because the lady, it was actually a lady, and she was um, and I don't I because it was like you say several people on that road, but I know she was blind and she knew what kind of money we were giving her and everything, so she stayed right there on that corner. Of um, and if I'm not yeah. mistaken, it was in the same building that Bruce stayed in. So um, you know, but yeah, like I say, you know, we had the three parks we had that we could go to. Um, you know, you go to people's houses, and the parents wouldn't care about you being there because most of the time you were outside, you didn't have to worry about you know ducking bullets or anything. You were just outside playing, having fun at somebody's house. So. Those are the types of things that we did. I know um, Malone's grocery store, I was telling them with Malone's, Miss um, Miss Malone taught me how to make a, a dollar out of a quarter. I'll just say it like that because I could take a quarter and get, just go buy snacks that would last, you know, at least almost two weeks. That's how slow I ate. But anyway, so... Um, those are the types of things that we grew up with. If you got in trouble, you know, your neighbors would chastise you or tell you, you know, no, you know, you're not doing that right. Some people said they got whooped by their neighbors. I never did get whooped by my neighbor, but I, my mama knew <laughs> what was going on by the time I got home. But it was just a, it was just a big family atmosphere. If you didn't know the person directly, you either went to school with them. Uh, we had safety patrol. We had the band. We had um, all kinds of activities. When we got to middle school, well, junior high school, Y teens for the girls, and boys had different things. But when we got to Hillside, that was when they had all the trades, um, you know, carpentry, um, brick mason. You learned a trade in school. So that helped with a lot of um, success too. Because when you came out of high school, you could come out of high school making money. But um, I don't know. Hey, anyway. Constance, if you look at that that picture there, Miss Rogers, mm -hmm. you talk about uh, community pride. Now, now right. take a look at that picture in the background. You'll see landscaping. Right. Yeah. And uh, everybody <laughs> talk about <landscaping>, that. <laughs> uh, grew flowers, cut grass, and uh, of course you could go down to the maintenance shop and sign out a lawnmower, push more push more and some uh, edgers and uh, you took them back you, you, you took care of your of your of your line uh, so there was so much pride in in the neighborhood now some people objected to the fact that there were periodic inspections of the units in McDougal uh, I personally thought that was a good thing because it kept people on their toes and you know, I just thought that was a part of a part of management. Some people took offense to that. That's okay, but still, we took care of it. Uh, the guys, and you, you you mentioned safety. You could go out and play. Now, don't get me wrong. There were uh, some tough guys in McDougal, uh, but they were respectful. Uh, they drank their wine, but they made sure that if respectable people came by, they hid such, and um, and they looked out for us. Uh, you mentioned uh, the Bobbies. It was uh, Pokey Bobby that told me, and he, and he said it this way. He says, Bug, he called me Jitterbug, right? Uh, Bug, you don't need to be out here in the streets. You're too smart for that. I never forgot that. 
And that's advice from guys who, who were older and uh, who saw what was down the road and they took care of us. Okay, uh, what you see now is a slide of uh, a protest. Now, my family, we had moved by the time this began to happen, but I can see that um, that these protesters were uh, were vigilant about having fair housing because uh, the first thing it says unfair. So we we always had a uh, uh, we always had a community of activists, and, and as Allison said, uh, uh, we we are highlighting uh, um, a lot of successes, but we also had a lot of failures. And uh, and those people were uh, not looked down upon. Uh, uh, they were always treated fairly in the community, and and, and we love them as we love those who had gone on. Because MacDougall Terrence produced uh, two uh, doctors as I, I, when I was growing up, and a host of other. Uh, there's a question in the, in the chat was, well, how can how can all this stuff be improved now? I'm gonna have to get off because my granddaughter's making too much noise. No, 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 she's fine, Vaughn. Okay. She's so there's fine. a there's there's a question uh, of how can how can uh, the conditions improve in McDougal Terrace? And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean that that there's been a lot. I know I read I read the story about the uh, carbon monoxide. You know. And I know there's a uh, there's a movement in America to knock down all to 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 get rid of all housing projects. And I've heard that I've heard over the years that Central was interested in buying uh, buying and leveling the grounds over there. So displacement has always been the first thing because uh, urban urban renewal tried to do it. Displacement has always been the first answer. But 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 uh, for us. I think it was education. Yeah, well, the, the activist, activism in McDougal, when I look at that picture there, I try to date things sometimes based on music and, and uh, fashion. And looking at that brother's shirt, I would say that happened prior to 1970. I see a pork pie hat on that gentleman's head back then. So, and I don't know whether I was around then, but I do remember Miss Ann Atwater, uh, which uh, was starring in the recent uh, movie documentary about uh, Durham. Uh, I remember my mother. I remember Mrs. Rogers. Uh, I remember those uh, Howard Fuller and Ben Ruffin and all those guys. Uh, who who started what was called United Durham Incorporated. And what they were trying to do was to invest in the food chain and by selling stock to neighbors for a dollar per share. And so the answer to one of your questions, Vaughn, about improvement, uh, we have to go into some economic arenas and uh, one of them that I've been studying recently and advocating more of is insurance. And that when people uh, have children, the first gift you might wanna give those children is an insurance policy. And for the price of one little outfit, one little cute outfit, you could pay a monthly premium where there's a company called Gerber Life Insurance. Uh, Gerber have a program where you could buy a $50,000 policy at birth. And at age 18, it turns into $100,000 and building up cash value. So that's one way of improving because the project as we knew it is over. It hasn't been managed in, in, in decades. It has been just a place to live, uh, a shelter over one's head. There was no, we had management, 
C.C. Cobb managed MacDougall Terrace. And you either loved him or you hated him, but he did, I think, what was his job. As, as a matter of fact, and I'm gonna cut uh, back and walk back, uh, the first inhabitants, and I was talking to Mr. Cobb's daughter, Genia, the first inhabitant of MacDougall Terrace was the Roberts family. Alfred, who became a doctor, Jackie, and uh, I think his sisters was Carolyn. Uh, he had another sister. But anyway, they were the first residents of MacDougall, and Mr. Cobb gave them uh, a chance to select any unit they wanted uh, to live in. And they did, they did very well. Thank you so much, Mr. Joyner. Um, we really appreciate um, your um, conversations, your thoughts, your memories. And I really like the answer to that question We're concerning economics. But I wanted to ask a question um, since you talked about um, Mr. Cobb and, um, and how he managed uh, McDougal. What were the relationships like your parents or if anyone had an issue because currently there's issues now and it's not good management right now. So what kind of relationship did you have with the management? You said some people didn't like him. Well, you know, the truth of the matter is Mr. Cobb was a lifetime resident of Durham. So he'd grown up with these gentlemen and, and ladies who were uh, the, the, the first uh, residents. And so he knew where they were coming from. They were coming from some poor conditions, et cetera, et cetera. The federal government had stipulations on uh, people living in, in, in public housing. And some of those stipulations were rather severe. Many people don't even realize that at the age of 18, unless a child went on to higher education, they really had to get a job and leave the house or they were there illegally. That was enforced through Mr. Cobb. Uh, people came from backgrounds where there was a lot of uh, uh, domestic issues. Mr. Cobb didn't tolerate that. It made, if there were a fight on Friday night, it made it back to Mr. Cobb's desk by Monday morning. And he would call them in for a conference. You won't find that today. Today, uh, I've, I've heard, I haven't seen any, I've heard of shootings and all kinds of nonsense in MacDougall Terrace. And uh, in fact, the day I took those pictures there, of my apartment, that tree there was a little small tree when we moved in. You can see now the roots have burst through the ground. But when I took those pictures, I also spoke with a law enforcement officer who was patrolling the area. And he saw me parked in front of the office building there. Now I was driving a Mercedes Benz, that's not the point. But he saw me as maybe uh, an outside uh, negative resource. What was I doing there in Magduga Terrace with a Mercedes Benz when I was minding my own business? But what I did I had struck up a conversation with the officer about enforcement in MacDougall. And I suggested to him that he build relationships with these people. They are people, they are humans. Another misconception was that uh, MacDougall was a tough place to, to live. It first occurred to me when I enrolled at North Carolina Central in 1969. And in 69, as a freshman, I've been going on that campus all of my life. Uh, but I went to freshman orientation where we were told places not to go. One of them was MacDougall Terrace for fear that you may get robbed. Or, but that was not the case. No one in MacDougall Terrace would rob a student. But that was the, the attitude pervade to the outside. Uh, you could come into MacDougall and shop, wash your clothes, get your hair cut, 
whatever you had to do and no one would bother you. But that, that was the uh, message that we sent to other people. Uh, of course, we did mischief. I mean, none of us ever paid to go into a football game at O'Kelly. And to my knowledge, I never paid to get into a concert in the McDougal Gymnasium. But we call that mischief. Yes. <laughs> even thank even you for today, that. if I came back to McDougal Tech, came back to Durham for a North Carolina Central University football game, I can find all of the homeboys sitting in the top of the stadium on the visitor's side at the 50 yard line. I know they're going to be there because that's where we sat when we were kids. Awesome. So, Thank you. Did I ask you a we question? have another question. Yes, sir. You answered uh, that question. Very good. Um, I have another one for you. Well, I have several, but uh, the next question is, um, I know that you have a really tight knit group. Do you or any of the residents that um, that are formerly from McDougal Terrace, do you have a reunion or do you meet and um, gather together annually or at any time since you've um, left North Carolina? Uh, I'll answer that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, reunion, we've had one. I think we had one that was organized and planned by the Daniels family. Bern, uh, not Bern, Bernice, yeah, Albert and Alberta uh, organized the reunion at the uh, uh, Civic Center about 20, 20 years ago or, or, or more, which, which was very nice. Uh, but I am in constant contact with Vaughn uh, with Tom Wilkins, uh, his brother Ronnie. But normally these days we meet on the golf course. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, we all used to caddy back in the day. And, 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 and so that's where we, we, we meet today. <laughs> and we couldn't play golf back then legally. So I have one, one last question before we wrap up. You talked about how the word project was being misused, uh -huh. but you talked about the concept that McDougal had because it had so many, um, like you said, you had a spray garden, there was a barbershop there, there was a hospital nearby. I noticed that somehow the, that concept has, um, what's the word I use? It is active and it's actually, um, popping up in so many communities around the country where they have a school. So what do you, do you have any thoughts on, do any of you have any thoughts on that? Because it seems to me that that concept that was so long ago is now coming up again. Well, well, it starts in the home, Cheryl. And if it's not being mentioned at home, uh, then you're at the mercy of the streets. And our day, we had discussions, uh, you know, I, I'm one of eight siblings and we had discussions at, at dinner. As a matter of fact, when dinner was served, we were all eating together. And if you missed your meal, you may miss your leftover. But we talked about things. There was constant learning and reinforcement of reality in the house. We weren't just left to the devices of the village. You know, so I think today that component uh, has, is missing not only in public housing, but in most house, households today. People don't, don't talk enough about the things that matter. These are crucial conversations that people have to have. If you're parenting, if you're mentoring, uh, if, if, if you're uh, thinking of getting married and starting a, starting a family, there are things that you have to discuss. And if you don't, you're taking a chance. Vaughn, you may want to add something to that. Actually, I'm so sorry, but we have run out, out of time. <laughs> some questions that we could maybe answer to... later, but thank you so much. We really appreciate it. I'll turn it back over to Laura. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks. Um, yeah, I can wrap up really quickly for the recording and we can stop and maybe still take a few more questions after the recording if, if people have a few minutes to stay. Um, so thank you, as always, um, to today's speakers. Um, Constance Wright uh, is, is still living in Durham and 
talk with her regularly and she was in, in so instrumental in, in helping to bring on Alton and Vaughn and also connect us with um, some other uh, people who weren't able to join us today as speakers. And I have it listed as youth speakers because you're always youth, I guess. Um, that was left over from the last slide. Sorry, I haven't edited that, um, but today's speakers. Um, I, yeah, I, I can't, I say this every time, but it's just, every time is it's just a great uh, wealth of knowledge and an hour is not nearly enough. Um, so um, hopefully we'll find ways, uh, if you're watching this recording on YouTube or on Facebook or even um, on the Durham Television uh, Network, if you'll contact us or, or leave a comment to you're from this community and you want to connect um, with people uh, that we've, we've spoken about today, please let us know because um, I, I think this is a great space to continue connecting the communities that we're featuring. Um, just to promote, uh, we, have, we do record all of these. You may be watching a recording now. Um, at the bottom of the slide, you'll see all of the other communities that we've featured so far. And I, just to, wanted to spotlight one this, this time in July, um, we had the Algonquin Club on, um, a story about the Algonquin Club, which was um, where the WD Hill Recreation Center is now. But that's a, that's a great um, history and story to watch if you have a, haven't had a chance to see it. And then coming up next month, we will be featuring the Wheels Fun Park. Um, and that will be uh, Friday, January 28th. Um, if you have stories from this community that you wanna share or photos, please let us know. Um, you can sign up for the event as always at durhamcommunityengagement.org um, and uh, learn more about our events there. And you should also be able to see this on our Facebook page, Durham Community Engagement. Thank you.